नमस्ते नमस्ते आई जे डी मोहम्मद शर्मा ज्योति विद्यापीठ वुमेन्स यूनिवर्सिटी डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी फैकल्टी ऑफ एजुकेशन एंड मेथडोलॉजी तो और टूडेज टॉपिक इज एलिमेंट्स ऑफ न्यूरल नेटवर्क एक्टिवेशन फंक्शन कॉस्ट फंक्शन एंड द लर्निंग ओके तो हेयर वी स्टार्ट विद लर्निंग रेट एंड कॉस्ट फंक्शन ओके सो बेसिकली वॉट डू यू मीन बाय द लर्निंग रेट ओके सो द साइज ऑफ लर्निंग रेट बिकम हायर एज द सिस्टम बेसिकली ट्रेन और टू लर्न द कंसेप्ट और टू से द आइडिया बिहाइंड द कोल्ड ट्रेनिंग ऑफ द सिस्टम फॉर एनी पर्टिकुलर डिजायर्ड आउट लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल गूगल सेल्फ ड्रिवन कार्स सो इन गूगल सेल्फ ड्रिवन कार्स वी हैव टू फर्स्ट ट्रेन द कार राइट वी हैव टू फर्स्ट ट्रेन द कार बाय यूजिंग डिफरेंट डिफरेंट फंक्शन एंड वीडियोज एंड बाय बाय एडिंग मोर फंक्शनैलिटीज है ना एंड मैनी अदर अदर डिफरेंट डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ ट्रेनिंग मॉडल्स सो दैट्स द कार लर्न इट सेल्फ हाउ टू ड्राइव ओके सो इट हैपन्स बिकॉज ऑफ द ए आई एंड द मशीन लर्निंग मॉडल सो लर्निंग रेट इज बेसिकली द लर्निंग रेट ऑफ एनी सिस्टम राइट विद अ हाई लर्निंग रेट वी कैन कवर मोर ग्राउंड इच स्टेप बट विद इज ओवर शूटिंग द लोएस्ट पॉइंट सिंस द स्लोप ऑफ द हिल इज कॉन्स्टेंटली चेंज सो हेयर वी टेक एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ क्लाइंबिंग द हिल राइट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू क्लाइंब द होल हिल फ्रॉम राइट टू द बॉटम टू द टॉप ओके सो देर इज काइंड ऑफ द स्लोप वर्किंग दर राइट so this is overshooting the lowest point since the slope hill is constantly changing so with a very low learning rate we can confidently move in the direction of the negative point since we can recalculate it so frequently a low learning rate is more precise for calculating the gradient as time consuming so it will take very long time bottom to uh, hill bottom to the top okay so learning rate is basically the Rate which is directly proportional to the training of the system with different different situations, conditions, and the restrictions. And next is cost function. So cost function is basically measure the performance of the whole model. How good the uh, system is, how good the model is to predict uh, the output, predict for a set of parameters. So the cost function has its own curve, and it. its own gradient and the slope of this curve tell us tell us how to update our parameters to make the model more accurate so it uses different different function like loss function loss function is basically the difference it measures the difference between the actual output and the desired output okay so basically uh, the data uh, the error we got here is the loss of data so this uh, this function calculate the loss function how far we are from our desired output so uh, the loss function calculated and the cost function calculate the performance right so uh, basically cost function measuring is done with the input and the output right before it uh, we can't measure right and uh, for uh, calculating input output and the performance of the system uh, we have to calculate the weight and biases weights that are associated with each and every node in the neural network and the bias is the additional one right which we are inferring to calculate the or desired of okay so cost function is single value not a vector because it rates how good the neural network is a whole okay so cost function is basically what is like function f c equal to c input output weight na input output weight and bias okay so cost function is solving the optimization problems of finding optimal weight and bias that result in best predictive uh, best predictive output we get right so this is all about the cost function and the next is activation function so activation function why do we need activation function So activation function decides whether a neuron should be activated or not by calculating 
created sum or further adding bias with it. The purpose of the activation function is to introduce the non-linearity into the output of a neuron. So basically, activation function defines the output of a neuron. Okay, based on the weighted set of inputs. Output is used as input for the next move and so on until we get the desired output. So non-linear activation function make a neural network non-linear. It causes decision boundaries to be curved instead of a straight line. Okay, so straight line we got y equal to mx plus b, linear regression or the same, right? So non-linear uh, functions are deal with the non-linear data basically, which map the which maps not a straight line, which maps uh, rather than a straight line. Okay, different different curves map uh, to say uh, basically it uh, create different different curves. Okay, and not get a a single straight line. Okay, so there are different different kind of uh, activation functions. So we know neural network has neuron that work in correspondence of uh, uh, of weight bias and their respective activation function. There are neural network we would update the weight and bias of the neuron on the basis of the error of the output. And this process is known as back propagation. As we already studied uh, back propagation in the previous class, activation function makes the back propagation possible since the gradient. Uh, gradient here you uh, because the next uh, this is uh, the basically pre process uh, part of the gradient descent algorithm because before to go to the gradient descent algorithm, you need to know all these steps, right? So activation function makes the back propagation possible since the gradient are supplied along with the error. Okay, to update the weight and bias. Basically, if you want or need any improvement in any kind of system, you need feedback, right? Like uh, if uh, some company uh, some company promotes some product, so it, it gets real-time feedback by the social media publicity. Like uh, today is a very trending Instagram digital marketing, right? So the company get real time feedback and improve their product to get a better uh, productivity and stuff, right? So here uh, we use the activation function and biases to improve our system, improve our model with better and better output and better and better prediction. Okay, so uh, here different. Uh, kind of activation function. So basically, why do we need non-linear activation function? So activation function are not applied. The output signal would be linear function, which is a polynomial of one degree. Well, it is easy to solve linear regression as we all know y equals to m x plus b is very easy to solve. That. We only need the value of x and what? Slope is m and the c is a constant, right? So while it is easy to solve linear equation, they have a limited complexity portion and has less portal and complex function mapping, right? So uh, without the activation function, a neural network would be a linear regression model with the limited abilities like data always plot a straight line. So it, it is it's basically not possible that data with a linear line is always performed well in each and every situation with each and every uh, constraint. It's not practically possible. So we have to move to non-linear uh, data and we have to deal with non-linear data. As uh, we, uh, in previous class, we studied MLP. So MLP is also introduced because of this problem. Right, data is not plotted in uh, always in a linear manner or or to say like in a straight line, right? So we have to perform complex function mappings, complex uh, different different variables, constraints, applying the conditions. So those are not possible by the single line. So hence we introduce here the activation functions, right? So this is certainly not what we want from a neural network. The task of neural network is to compute highly complicated calculations. And furthermore, without activation function, neural network cannot learn and model other complicated data like images, speeches, videos, audio, etc. Because all these are kind of unstructured data, right? Uh, so AF helps 
uh, neural network to make sense of complicated high dimension and non-linear big data set that have an intricate architecture and they contain multiple hidden layers in input and output layer, right? So uh, there are various kind of uh, activation function and the first one is the sigmoid function and all these are non-linear. Okay, so sigmoid function in an, an, a, uh, in an artificial neural network, the sigmoid function is a non-linear AF. AF here stands for activation function used primarily in the feed-forward neural network. It is differentiable re uh, real function defined as real input values and containing positive derivatives everywhere with a specific degree of smoothness. The sigmoid function appear in output layer of the deep learning model and used for predicting the probability-based output. Like, for example, if you want to predict the age of the person, then you go for the probability, right? Different, different probability and different, different age ranges, right? So the sigmoid function is represented as fx uh, equal to 1 upon 1 plus e to power minus p. Okay, so basically, sigmoid function is uh, containing positive derivatives as well, right? No negative derivative is there. And second one is tanh function, hyperbolic tangent function. The hyperbolic tangent function, tanh, is another type of AF. It's a smoother zero center function having a range between minus one to one. Okay, the tanh function has mostly used in different neural network for natural language processing and speech recognition tasks. And however, the tanh function too has a limitation. Just like the sigmoid, it cannot solve the vanishing gradient problem. Also, the tanh function can only attain a gradient of one. Then the input, agar hum isme zero dalenge, ठीक है? तो क्या देगा ये? अगर हम zero dalenge तो क्या देगा? It will produce some bad neurons during the computation process. Okay, so it is always work uh, with between the range of minus one to one. Okay. So here we can see in this uh, graph, sigmoid function here, we can see uh, sigmoid is the red one. So sigmoid is going from uh, this, uh, like exponentially, it can increase, but in a positive manner, not in a negative, right? So it always has the positive derivative in sigmoid function, right? In tanh, we have the mi minus one to one. So if x is greater than zero it gives one output and if uh, our input is uh, less than zero then it gives minus one okay so x is here the input and this calculated the f of x okay so next one is the relu function relu is a very important function in machine learning and deep learning because most of the time we uh, perform the uh, training of the training models uh, by using the uh, rectified linear unit ReLU function. So one of the most popular AF and DL models, deep learning models, and the rectified linear unit function is a fast learning activation function that promises to deliver state of art performance. So basically ReLU is what? Uh, so ReLU is, it gives a positive output. Okay, either zero or one. If, if your output is greater than the zero, then it gives you it gives you the one. Means if this is non-linear function, which is non-differentiable at x equal to zero, right? So it it is flat. If your input is x greater than zero, then it gives you one. Otherwise, it otherwise it gives you zero. Okay. So this is also used in gradient descent methods and many other algorithms also. Okay, and by rectifying the values of the input less than zero and setting them to zero, this function eliminates the vanishing gradient problem. So, vanishing gradient problem we can learn in the gradient descendant uh, algorithm part. So, here we can see the earlier type of uh, sigma and tanh have this uh, vanishing gradient problem, but really eliminate it. And the most significant advantage of value is it it enhances the performance because it doesn't compute exponentials, divisions, because all these uh, calculations take more time, right? So it 
uh, also uh, affects the performance of the model. So it doesn't compute any exponential and dividends, thereby boosting the overall computation system of the model. So here you can see in the graph, if your uh, input is zero or negative, so it gives you zero, right? And if your uh, input is greater than zero, then it gives you one. Okay, so this is uh, how uh, the ReLU function works. So this is all about the activation function, cost function, and the learning rate. Thank you so much.